Yes, more cops and surveillance cameras. It's sort of like a tornado in a trailer park or a moth to the flame. This is some footage submitted by a subscriber. It's August 19th, 2022. Imagine a woman is at home in a quiet neighborhood in Bay County, Florida. Unbeknownst to her, someone's AirPods went missing. For some reason, and I've been seeing a lot of this lately, the cops believe that they have located them in her home. That's probably because a stranger shows up first, um, claiming that these missing AirPods were pinging from inside the house. The woman doesn't answer the door, well, because he's a stranger. A little while later, the cops show up with no warrant and do what creepy cops do, which is search without a warrant. They go into the woman's backyard. One stands outside the bedroom window of her 15-year-old son, like some sort of law enforcement peeping Tom. I think we've established that Florida has way too many cops. They apparently have nothing better to do. Maybe the AirPods belong to the sheriff's cousin or something. I don't know. All of what you are about to see consisted of a warrantless AirPod recovery mission. Government waste issues aside, can the police just go through the gate to your backyard, your fenced off backyard? Can they just snoop around your backyard and spy on your son in his bedroom or just be weird like that? Watch the footage first and then I'll give you the law. Sarah was working from home and saw the man as he approached. She was alarmed and so she didn't answer the door. Instead, she kept an eye on him with our security cameras. I was at my office at the time. She sent me the videos and I told her to keep the doors locked and let me know if he comes back. Four hours later, things really got strange. Two deputies entered our closed gate and snuck into our backyard. One of them tiptoed to her son's window and posted up while her son was in his room playing video games. Meanwhile, Law enforcement lined our street and eight officers responded to this call about stolen AirPods. A deputy knocked on the front door and was joined by two others. Hey, how you doing? Oh, not much. Uh, Steve Hyde, I'm with Sheriff's Office. Are you, uh, Ms. When Sarah answered, she feared the worst. She thought that they were there to deliver bad news. She asked them who died. She thought maybe the guy came to my office and killed me. They asked her to step outside and began asking about the stolen AirPods. What, what's going on? Somebody, somebody show up here earlier asking to get an air, say AirPods. Oh, no, God, hear me. Okay, this hurt. No, but I have video of somebody banging on my door. Like, y'all have video of it right here and right here. Yep. I don't think somebody died. Real, kicking though. the mom Everybody out. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> this side, homie. The other two deputies were in our backyard for about eight minutes. Finally, they ran to the house across the street. There was apparently no warrant here, but the cops didn't go inside the home. Does that matter? For the too long won't watch types, I'll save you some time and let you get back to your funny animal video. Cops need a warrant, even in your backyard, with only a couple of limited exceptions, none of which appear applicable here. You're free to go. For the rest of you, let me explain. According to the 1984 U.S. Supreme Court opinion in Oliver v. United States, the heightened Fourth Amendment protections of your home extend beyond just the interior of your home itself into what's called the curtilage of the home, which is the land immediately surrounding and associated with your home. Because according to the Supreme Court, the curtilage is considered part of the home itself for Fourth Amendment purposes. Now, in 2013, the Supreme Court opinion of Florida v. Jardines, the court held that a search undoubtedly occurs 
when the government without a warrant obtains information by physically intruding within the curtilage of a house, which in that case involved a home's front porch and a drug dog. The court cautioned that a search occurs unless a homeowner has explicitly or implicitly sanctioned the government's physical intrusion into the constitutionally protected area, i.e. the yard and or front porch of the home. Under the, quote, knock and talk exception to the warrant requirement, a police officer not armed with a warrant may approach a home and knock and uh, seek to talk with the individual precisely because that is no more than any other private citizen might do. So this means that there is an implicit license, supposedly, to approach, supposedly, to approach the home by the, the front path, knock promptly, wait briefly to be received, and then, absent an invitation to linger longer, leave. An officer may also bypass the front door or another entry point usually used by visitors when circumstances reasonably indicate that the officer might find the homeowner elsewhere on the property. Critically, however, listen to this, the right to knock and talk does not entail a right to conduct a general investigation of the home's curtilage. The 11th Circuit, which applies to Florida specifically where we are here, has warned police officers, look at the case of U.S. v. Maxie from 2018, that their right to just go up to a citizen's front door and knock and talk does not include inviting armed men into the homeowner's yard to, quote, launch a raid or even to, quote, conduct a search. So the only possible justification for this behavior would be circumstances of hot pursuit. Under the hot pursuit doctrine, police officers may enter a premises without a warrant when they are in hot pursuit of a fleeing suspect. What is that? A hot pursuit means some sort of chase. The Supreme Court has indicated that a claim of hot pursuit is unconvincing where there's no immediate or continuous pursuit of an individual from the scene of a crime. You can look at United States versus Fuller, 11th Circuit, 2014. That clearly does not appear to be the case here. Even assuming AirPods actually went missing, and even assuming someone actually claims that they pinged to this location, or even assuming that they did, in fact, ping to this location, that doesn't change the legal analysis here at all. So when it comes to a home, which includes the curtilage around the home, a warrant is required, period. Or consent or exigent circumstances. Those are the only exceptions. Now, exigent circumstances includes the subcategory of, quote, hot pursuit. So hot pursuit in turn requires probable cause that some crime was committed and that an individual they pursued into the house may have committed that crime. I see no indication of any pursuit or chase whatsoever here, certainly not one that is also immediate and continuous all the way from some crime scene. All they have so far as justification goes is their general right to knock and talk. Cops have been abusing knock and talks for years. On a knock and talk, they are merely authorized to act just like a little girl selling Girl Scout cookies could do. As I explained in a previous video about this, uh, this law, knock and talks, police have an implied license just like anyone else to come out and just knock on your door and talk to you. Again, just like Girl Scouts. But you have to understand this. You can revoke that implied license by asking them to leave or even by putting up no trespassing signs or some sort of no cops allowed sign. They're not going to inform you that you don't have to talk to them. They're not going to inform you that you can ask them to leave, but you can. But they, they're not going to tell you because they, they want you to think that you have no choice but to interact with them and answer their questions. Know your rights. Tell them to leave and to go pound sand if that's what you want. Something I learned in my years of criminal defense practice, generally speaking, the cops want to talk to you because they have no evidence against you. They're required by law to have evidence in order to get a search warrant or an arrest warrant. And they need you to provide that evidence for them. Anytime that you're, uh, you're tempted to provide this evidence for them, just think of a taxidermy fish on the wall mounted with a plaque that reads, If I had only kept my mouth shut. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe if constitutional rights are important to you. Or, if you're a cop, you can also subscribe. Let me know in the comments your reaction to this footage. You can learn more at the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com, posted in the link. Please also make sure to subscribe there and also at my other social media sites. Remember, freedom is scary. Deal with it. I'll see you next time.